Okay, so now let's talk about projectile motion. Projectile motion is something of a curved pattern that you see. So we've seen people toss a ball, probably notice that they throw the object. It doesn't always travel in that perfect straight line, but kind of has a curve to it, um, sort of downward towards the earth. Well, it's because the Earth's gravity is obviously acting on that projectile, and so it's actually pulling it towards the Earth. So that's why you throw it straight out. It's going to curve towards the Earth because it's actually pulling it there. So we have horizontal and vertical motions when we talk about this push or pull on that object being thrown. And so when you throw the ball, the force exerted by your hand pushes the ball forward, and gravity is a horizontal motion pulling that down to the earth. And so the no force accelerates it um, forward, so its horizontal velocity is constant um, if you ignore air resistance. Now obviously air resistance is still there, but we can kind of ignore it for some problems. However, when you let the ball go, gravity can pull it downward, giving it a vertical motion, and the ball is at a constant horizontal velocity and increasing its vertical velocity which means gravity is an unbound force acting on this ball, changing its direction and path, and forming a forward to forward and downward motion. Now, when we start talking about some of this stuff, remember these forward motions, this horizontal velocity, and this vertical velocity, we're talking about vectors. A scalar would be just speed, but because we're putting a direction to it, um, it is going to be a vector. Now, the horizontal motion is where you're throwing that forward. Gravity is obviously pulling it down, causing that horizontal um, velocity to also increase. So that's where we kind of get those two from. So as a result, these two motions, the ball looks like it's in a curved path. So here's a question for you. If you were to throw a ball as hard as you can um, from your shoulder height, in a perfect horizontal direction, would it take longer to reach the ground than if you drop the ball at the same height? So if I take and I pitch it from the pitcher's mound and I pitch it 100 miles an hour, is it going to be the same, will it take the same time to get to the ground as it did if I just held my hand out and dropped it? And so, oh, this isn't really working. Uh, surprisingly, it wouldn't. Both balls would travel at the same vertical distance um, in the same amount of time. So centrifugal force, let's talk about that. Centrifugal force is when a ball enters a curve and if its speed uh, does not change, it's accelerating because of the directional changes. Um, if a ball goes around a curve and the change in its direction of velocity is towards the center of the curve. so. Think about this. If you were taking a bucket of water and then spun it in a circle, everything accelerates towards the center, and um, that would be a centrifugal acceleration provided by a centrifugal force. Now, if I take this bucket and I swirl it around with water in it, none of the water falls out. We're actually having a force pushing from the center all the way to the back, holding the water in there so it doesn't fall out of the bucket which is kind of a neat concept. So according to Newton's second law, when the ball has centrifugal acceleration, the direction of the net force on the ball must act um, towards the center of this curved path. Uh, the net force exerted towards the center of the curved path is called centrifugal force. So towards the center, focusing out, that's why the water wouldn't fall in the bucket. You can do this with a ball. Just take a little ice cream pail, swirl it around with a ball in it, the ball doesn't fall out. That's because of the centrifugal force and the centrifugal acceleration. So, when we talk about traction, if a car is going on the highway and acting or moving on this curved path, we have to have some type of frictional force between the highway and the curved path, and that is going to be our traction. And so, what's going around this must act on that. Um, so that you don't see the road or the car doesn't go off the road. However, if the road is slippery, the frictional force the frictional force is very small and the centrifugal acceleration might be too large and the car would just keep moving off of the road and slide further into that curve. 
And that's when you kind of lose control on some of that stuff. So, imagine you are whirling an object tied to a string above your head. So we kind of talked about this. The string exerting the centripetal force on the object keeps it moving in the circular path. Um, so we can see that right here. The moon is going into the circular path. It keeps in that rotation, the same rotation the entire time. Because it keeps going in that same rotation, or that we have that centripetal force keeping that there. Now, if it would just go away or be gone, we would see that it would sling off in this direction or in the opposite direction down below. So let's try these out. You can answer these questions as a class. Is the astronaut is the following statement true or false? An astronaut has less mass on the moon since the moon exerts a weaker gravitational pull. Well, it's false. The mass doesn't depend on the gravitational pull. That's weight. Okay. Describe the path of the marble as it is leaving the spiral behind. So how do you think it's going to flow off of here? Well, it's going to travel in a straight line since the tube is no longer exerting a net force. So it will just go in the direction that it was going. Okay. The moving truck launches the ball vertically. Related to the truck, if the truck maintains its constant horizontal velocity after its launch, where will the ball land? Ignore air resistance. Pretend it's not there. Which one is it going to be? Will the correct answer is C. In the trunk, the horizontal velocity of the ball remains constant and is unaffected by its vertical motion. Okay. True or false, the astronaut in space feels weightlessness because there's no gravity in space. Well, that's false. There's still gravity because the shuttle's there. Um, she feels weightlessness because we got a zero rate of what we had before. Okay, so there's a second, another video that you're going to watch. It's going to calculate centrifugal force, which is going to help you with your homework assignment. And you will have a lab tomorrow.